Hi, this is Isabel Reza. I'm going to do a walkthrough of the edit of a picture we've taken in a photography class I teach. Um, this is for my class members to follow along, but it's also a good tutorial for anybody who is interested in um, taking multiple parts of a, of a photo and making one, as well as inputting a sky and a cool little texture overlay I have as the sparkles. So I'm going to go through the process. I've already culled my images and these are the images I'm going to be working with. I'm going to go through a process of why I've chosen these images. This first image is going to be my base image and the reason why I chose this image is because she's off-centered. kind of looks like she's looking off into that direction. It gives me a little bit of room to play with. She's also smaller in the scene. So if the crop is pretty wide out, my canvas to work with is pretty wide. It allows me to be a, you know, a little creative and a little artistic in there and it's not as cropped in. When you're doing artistic work, a lot of the times you want to leave a lot of room to work with because you never know exactly what you're going to be doing. In this second image I chose because I like the hair flip on the right side. I'm going to take the hair from this image and put it onto the other image. I chose this image down here on the bottom uh, as, as the other one is the hair flip. We're actually going to take more from this image than just the hair. We're going to take the whole upper body. I like how she's reaching out to the sky, and I think that her reaching out and her face looking out into that direction will work really well with the very first image where she's off in the corner. In this last image here, we're going to choose this image because her skirt has a little flare. You can see down here my uh, husband slash assistant is hiding. He is my official dress fluffer. And he floofed the dress on this image, and I just love the way it flows. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to match all of these images as close to each other as possible before we export them to Photoshop. We want to do this that way the dress is, is as color, the dress brightness and the overall image is as close as possible so we don't have to do a lot of major work in Photoshop to try to match these dresses together. So I'm going to start with this first image. And I know, compared to this image, which is where I'm going to take the top, it's pretty dark. So we're going to go ahead and take this image, bring this top down, and go into Develop. And I'm going to bring the exposure up. For some reason, it's really low on this. So I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit. I'm just going to keep going between these two images to see. Bring the exposure up just a little bit. Actually it looks like it did a pretty good job. Then I'm going to move on to this next one. I'm going to go ahead and hit previous and it will do the edit from the last image over. So I'll do this and go previous. And it did it and unfortunately it seems like it still just doesn't match. It's still a little dark compared to well, yeah, it's a little dark in the dress. So we're going to go ahead, and if I look over here, I'm still in a, and for some reason I'm in a negative, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to, uh, I don't know if I see why I'm in the negative, because it was actually shot a little bright. So let's go ahead and maybe do, let's try a negative five. And we're using the hair flip on this one, so... Maybe you want to look more at the hair and the contrast in the hair compared to this one and that one. They look pretty similar. I do actually like it a little darker in the hair so it's easier to select later on. So I'm going to go ahead and um, darken that a little bit. Well, no, let's bring it back up because I realized the other image that we're using for the hair flip is actually we're going to be using her entire top half. So I'm going to go ahead and just lighten it up that way it matches closer so you don't have to do any extra editing work later on. Let's go ahead and go to oops, five. <laughs> uh, can be a point zero zero trade. No lightening or darking at, at all. Comparing this one. 
It works there. And I'm gonna check this one. This dress here is my big concern is these images are a little overexposed over here. <clears throat> this one actually was probably shot pretty, pretty straight on. So I'm going to head and probably brighten this exposure up. It looks like it's already been brightened, but we're gonna do it a little bit. A little bit more. I worry about losing some information into that skirt, so. We'll go ahead and just work from there and blend it over. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with... I like to just do all my editing in one swoosh. So I'm going to go ahead and click all of my images that I'm going to take over. And I use Command to click each one. I hold Command. And I'm going to hit right click. I'm going to go Edit In. And I'm going to edit in Adobe Photoshop. go ahead and edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. That way it takes whatever you just did in Lightroom over with you. This says that my Camera Raw plugin needs to be updated, so I'm going to go ahead and go open anyways because we're not going to be using Camera Raw, we're using Lightroom. Just give it a second to load. And you'll notice at the very top, as each image loads, it loads a little tab up here. Kind of like an internet browser. Every time you open a new window or a new tab in your browser, it has a little tab. So you can switch between each of them like you would on your uh, computer when you're browsing the internet. So we're going to go ahead and we know that this is going to be our base image because I like how much room there is. I like that she's in the rule of thirds. And I kind of like the angle. It kind of gives you a little bit of an artistic feel because you're a little lower than her. And you can kind of tell that she's kind of floating in the grass rather than sitting into it like she is over here where you can't really tell she's on the ladder. <clears throat> so my process is a little bit unorthodox. I like to just kind of work with it and see what works and what doesn't work. So we may do a lot of mistakes and re-editing and, and backtracking. So let's go ahead and let's start with the, the skirt flip. It's always a good easy one to start with. There's a couple of ways of selecting it and I'm actually going to choose a different way than we taught in class and I'm going to be using the quick selection. The reason why we taught the other one in class if you were in the class was because it just kind of taught you layer masking and we're not going to do that this time. This time we're going to do quick selection which is the brush with a little loopy and then we're going to kind of pull down and select as much of this dress as possible. Okay. Get in there, make sure you select as much as that. It's good on the lines. Okay, I'm going to hit Option or Alt, and I'm going to it gives you a little negative key in your selection, and it's going to take out some of this extra stuff down here. And that did a really good job, actually. So, let me get this little stopper out. Now, what we can do is there's always a lots of different ways of doing things, and this is just the self-taught way for me. Is I'm going to go ahead and hit Command J, and it cut out the dress for us. And I like this selection way because it gives you a very clean selection. So, what we're going to do is take these little pointers up here. Make sure your your skirt layer is selected, and we're gonna pull it up, and we're gonna drop it on to our main image that we're working with. So we just kind of drop that on there. And there's our skirt. Kind of looks a little funky, right? So what we need to do now is we need to go in and blend these skirts together. <clears throat> so over here on my palettes here, I'm gonna take this. And I'm gonna drop my opacity until I can kind of see both dresses in there just to work with and I'm gonna try not to look at my other image that is the final image so um, the way I edit this it might actually turn out a little different than the original image so let's go ahead and play with this little box and usually it should automatically add to your emit your, your layer when you select on it like that, but if it doesn't, you can always hit Command T or go to File, or excuse me, go to Edit and Free Transform. 
Okay, so let's work with this this a little bit here, and I kind of like. Luckily, she kind of just kind of blends right into that there. It lines up really well. It's always good to try to take images uh, from the same standpoint when you're trying to add it all in together like this. I was luckily standing in the same spot shooting at the same angle, so it's all going to really seamlessly add into each other. It's always good to think about what you're going to want and make sure you shoot from one spot because if you move around, then your angles are going to be different and the shadows are going to be different and it's going to be really hard to try to edit them all together. So we did this and so I'm going to go down to my little um, palette down here at the bottom and I'm going to hit the layer tool and what this looks like a little paper with a hole in the middle. And remember white shows black hides. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my opacity and my layer back up since we know that's kind of where we want it. I'm going to click my white layer mask to make sure that I am painting on the white mask and not on the dress image. I'm going to go to my brush tool and make it black and then I'm going to start kind of blending it in here a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about the top right now because I know that I'm going to be using a different top. So just start kind of working your image in here. So we know we can get rid of all of this on this side. And you kind of see how it, the dress like just really blends into each other because I was standing in the exact same spot. So it's super easy. Okay, I'm going to come down on my opacity of my brush, not my layer. So the way of doing that is you can come up to here where this is all your brush and you can click here and you can scroll down or I love my shortcuts. On your number pad you can hit the number keys. One is for 10%, two is for 20%, three is for 30% and so on. Zero is 100. I'm going to go ahead and hit my five key and it's going to move it to 50%. Cool. And then I'm going to just kind of start blending it in a little bit here. It's okay to get some of this leaves in here. That's kind of the reason why I like shooting from that angle is because you got to see all these extra leaves, just make sure you try to go through and try to get as much as it as possible. I may not like that, but we'll see. Um, hmm, actually I'm gonna, let me go ahead, as I said, it's all trial and error. I'm gonna go ahead and go to 100% and mask that back out here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, that's okay there. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my black to hide, and I'm gonna go back down to 50%. And I'm gonna be really careful here. I'll go back and fix that in a second. I'm just kind of fade it. All right. So you see the problem I just happened now is I'm fading where there's no back dress. So what that does is it's you can see the sky behind it. So I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna paint that back in at 100%. And just paint that back in there. So the biggest thing you're seeing here is trying to find a good point where the crinkles blend into the main dress. And that could be a little difficult to do. And luckily in an artistic image you don't have to get too fine detailed in there. But it's getting as close as possible is best. I might have to clone that later. I really don't like how that's, this dress is crinkling through here up because it's straight down here. So I'm going to have to go in and um, do some clone stamping. Alright. Um, I mean overall it's looking pretty good. Let me do this real quick and just check this hair. See how my hair is kind of not blending in there. And then the right here is kind of not blending, so I'm going to go back here on my black brush. And maybe just blend that in a little bit more over here. I'm going to be really careful because you can see here too, where once again, this is where the dress ends. Bring that back a little bit. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but just needs to look realistic enough. And luckily, we're from far back, so. 
Okay. I do have a problem with, because the dress was stamped into there, that it's looking a little too sharp. So I'm gonna take the black brush and finally kind of really just get in there and just kind of soften my edges just a little bit. Just to kind of blend the hard edges in. I'm just getting the very tips. Make sure you're at 100%. I just realized I was at 70. And go back through there and just kind of get the tips. And it just kind of starts slowly blending that sharp image to make it a little more softer and blurrier so it doesn't stand out as much. And I'm holding the shift button. So if you hold the shift button and you click once and hold shift and then click again down a straight line, it kind of erases it. Notice that's a curve. <laughs> So I lost it, so I'm going to have to just draw this through. Let's try that. I'm close enough. And then this edge here is very harsh, so I'm going to just kind of go through and bring it down so it's just not so harsh. I'm just going to be very careful down here. Looks like that I needed to anyways because I'm getting some background image in there. Okay. I think that does it. That screen is it just softens up just a, just a little bit. Okay. So an issue we're having with the dress here is it's a little darker in the shadows. So I'm going to hit command and click my dress image. I'm going to come to my half moon and let's bring up, uh, let's try levels. And so with levels, this is your darks, and this is your brights, and this is your midtones. And what we want to do is we want to kind of boost our midtones. Just a little bit there. What that does, just kind of boosted it there. And then, we notice it was, it's pretty hefty there. So I'm going to take my black brush, I'm going to select the layer mask that comes with the half moon brightness. And, yeah, let's say 80%, so I'm going to hit 8. I'm going to start brushing that off a little bit in some spots. It's just not as punchy as it looked. Make sure I take it off the other dress because the other dress was already highly exposed. I think it just kind of helped a little bit. Let's bring that back over in this little spot here. Not perfect, but just believable enough, I think. And we're going to go through and we're going to try to clone this little spot here up. I'm going to bring this down in opacity a little bit. It's still a little bright for my taste. Kind of like the little bit of shadow in there. Alright, so that's my skirt. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my images. I like to keep my, image, my layers as minimal as possible so I don't get confused. So now that we have the background, I'm going to drag and to this page next to the trash can and that creates a new layer or you can hit command J, shortcuts are awesome. Let's work with the tool, the stamp brush. So I'm going to go ahead and click the stamp brush, make sure we're on normal, opacity is 100, we're at full. I'm actually going to zoom in real quick here because I know we're going to be working here. Now I'm going to click my stamp pool and then I'm going to kind of just work this image in a little bit. I'm going to sample up here. Maybe just bring it down a little bit here. And then, actually I'm going to do that. Let's try that, but let's go ahead and go to 60%. So I hit the 6 number. 
Alright, I still have that spot selected. So we'll come down here. Just kind of, that way it blends in a little bit easier here. Let's go down to the 4 key. some of these curves away a little bit here. Get some of this. Do that. Let's see what that looks like. It's a little more believable. Yeah, we just kind of took that down a little bit. Let's try a patch tool. Patch tool is always a good blender. And then I'm gonna line it up to that line right there. Just kind of see what we get here. Try to line it up there. Okay, it's looking a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring that back just a little bit on my opacity there. It just kind of helps a little bit in there, so that way the dresses kind of just match a little bit more. Not perfect, but close enough. Alright, so that is, I'm going to flatten this, and then I'm going to my history palette, which is little buttons. Where is my history palette? Oh, it's over here. I'm going to click the camera and it kind of makes a snap tool. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to look at my original and with the skirt. Eh, it's not perfect, but by the time we get all the elements together and add the editing to it, it'll work out just fine. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video for now. And this is how you pull your skirt over onto your image. Part 2 will be the top half.